Greetings, folks, and welcome to the Small Business Show, episode 293 for Wednesday, September 9th, 2020. The show by, for, and about small business. Uh, by small business. Small, well, it's by small business owners, and yes. it's a, for and about. Well, it's by and for small business owners, and it's about small business. Uh, here in Durham, it. New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out in uh, smoky California, I'm Shannon Jean. Yeah, How are man. you, man? I'm doing okay. Yeah, just sorting out uh, language on the intro there. So there we'll, you go. We'll well, do it in real time. It's a work in progress. You know, we've, we've only done it 292 times. So. Right. That's right. <laughs> We're yeah. always up for changing and trying new things. And I always like to, to spring that on you right before we start. So. That's right. So it's by and for small business owners. It is about small business. That makes sense to yeah. me. Yeah. By, for, and about. I, I like that. I think that's a yeah, good, but by, uh, for, and about. Small business owners. There you go. That's it. Life for and about small business owners. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Right, there you go. Yep. Okay. I, I can get this right. I'll remember that for next week. No problem. BFA. That, that goes on the t shirt, right? Yeah. And you know what? I recorded it just in case. So if I forget, I can just listen back. So, and you That's know what? We perfect. can share this with our listeners too. So, hey, <laughs> let's try that for a change. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, today we're going to talk about something I really uh, I'm, I'm very interested in, and that's luck. Uh, and I think that you and I have some interesting perspectives on it, some that are aligned and some that are a bit different. Mm. Uh, and I think that it's something to uh, that we should all be aware of because luck just doesn't fall out to, out of the ether um, like so much of the ash that's falling on, on yeah. my property today. Uh, and so we're going to talk about how to attract and maybe more importantly, how to amplify your luck. I'm in, man. I'm, I, I could use more of that these days. I think we all could. Always. Always. All right. Well, he is Shannon Jean. I'm Dave Hamilton. And this is The Small Business Show. You feeling lucky? I am. That's why we're here. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was like, I, I, so I've got some questions, you know, why do some people seem to be so lucky, right? You look at him, it's like, man, that, that guy, that woman is so lucky, you know? And I also wonder, can you make yourself luckier than others, right? And then since we're, we're talking all about small business, you know, how can luck impact your small business? So that, that's what we're going to talk today yeah. uh, and see where we go and hopefully help you bring some luck into your Maybe not even just your business life, but your personal your life. Personal well. life. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't buy lottery tickets. Um, if, nope. and it, there's, there's reasons for that. But um, in, in general, though, there is a good lesson to be learned from the, from lottery tickets that I think serves as an umbrella for this whole episode. And that is, when you look at somebody and you're like, wow, they won, you know, a hundred million dollars in the lottery. They're so lucky. Well, they paved their way to that luck by buying a ticket. If they hadn't bought the ticket, it didn't matter if luck was going to strike them, they were going to miss out. So that's right. You got to remember, you know, buy the ticket. And we're going to talk about a lot of different things that sort of follow that analogy of buy the ticket. But that's 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 the key. You got to get yourself yeah. ready for that. That, you know, the fortunate moments happen. The question is, are you prepared to leverage them? Like, that's right. you know, that, and that to me, that's, that's really where all this comes from is the, the concept, you know, I'm a boy scout, right? So always be prepared. Yeah, that's, too. that's the model. Yeah. You're right. So, you know, but, but that's, it's not just be prepared for disaster. It's be prepared for good things too. I always say to people, especially friends that are like, man, you know, you seem like you have it all together. It's like, well, yeah, I don't actually have it all together. I just, you know, I just make it look that way. You present it well. Yeah. That's all it is. That's all it is. It's an act that's folks. Good, that's okay. No, it's okay. We're, it's so far so good. Uh, but I always tell them, I say, look, here's the thing, the bad stuff that happens, you know, and there, there is bad stuff that happens to all of us. You, you know, I was cut open last week for crying out loud. Uh, yeah. it, the, the bad stuff that happens, that's going to get into your life. No matter what you do, the bad stuff's going to get in. What you can control is whether or not the good stuff gets into your life. So my advice is, since the bad stuff's going to get in, when the good stuff shows up, let it in, even if it seems untimely for you. Even if it seems like, wow, I'm not quite ready for this stroke of, of, of luck or fortune. Let it in, because it's right there. You get to choose whether or not you let the good stuff in. Let it in. 
That's yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, along those lines, I, I think there's some real practical aspects of this concept as, as well, which I, I really yep. want to dive deep into today on a kind of top level uh, aspect. You know, luck is a state of mind. Right. Totally. Uh, and there's a couple of people I really uh, respect that that kind of promote this concept. You know, the first one is that Norman Vincent Peale. You know, he wrote a book, The Power of Positive Thinking. Right. So he sold 5 million copies, a few more than our mistakes uh, pocket guide. We're close, and, though. We're, and, we're and nipping at his heels. There. That's yeah. right. And and his concept, or, you know, the first thing he talks about, or one of the first things he talks about in the book is expect the best and luck will find you, right? And if you, if you don't start out thinking that, you you know, oh, the good things are going to happen, that kind of stuff. And then, and then the other guy that I, I mention here all the time that I like is Scott Adams. And he has this, uh, the user manual for life concept, all about controlling your own reality and, and questioning, you know, what actions you take that it, are you controlling reality or is things just happening to you? But it's by, you know, controlling that reality by how you think. So I really am a firm believer in, in that and those higher level concepts. But I also believe in more practical aspects of it, all about attracting luck and how to, and how to amplify it. Yeah. And I've got a few concepts on, I'd love to dive into. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. You, you, we, we've both got some things prepared here, but go yeah, ahead, man. It's yeah. Good. Yeah. And, and we can intermix these because yeah, some of, of us, I think we have some overlap, but one of the things that has helped me tremendously um, is learning how to compartmentalize my life. Mm. And, as you grow, whether it's your business, your family, all these things, and if you, you start to build out your revenue stack and your talent stack, and, and life gets complicated, you know, and there's, uh, to your point, Dave, there's always going to be, you know, either you can call them bad or, or things that are coming into your life that are uh, kind of beyond your control, or maybe it is in your control, but you can't control it right then. You can't right. do it immediate, immediately. Right. Um, compartmentalize is such a long, you know, word that doesn't roll off the tongue. So I, I just like to say, you know, you need to section your life into pieces and it kind of create a file cabinet in your head and section those things off as needed, depending upon what you're doing. And the, the example I like to use is the walking around in your business concept, right? Which is so important to walk around, to get out of your office, go say hello, ask people how they're doing, how your employees in, interact with your employees. So, Let's say you're having a payroll issue or something's going on in the background. Well, you have to file that away and put a smile on your face and not let maybe some of these, maybe they're just, you know, minor problems or maybe they're major problems. Um, you got to file that stuff away, get the smile on your face, section things off that you can't control at that moment. You want to lift your mood so you can lift the mood of the people around you, those people. And, and when you make people feel better, when you help people feel happy, make them feel more confident, you get those feelings reflected back to you. I've seen it. It happens over and over and over. And, you know, you keep that in mind when you're meeting with other people, vendors, customers, even friends and family. The way you carry yourself, the mood, the words you use, the tone you set, the smile on your face, all that stuff gets reflected back to you. And I consider those reflections as luck. Yeah. Bigger, you know, better ideas come back to you, bigger deals, more creative solutions, because you're creating this positive feedback loop with everyone around you and you're trying to lift them up. And it's very difficult to do it, especially when you have some major. I mean, I've had major problems with one business or another, you know, oh, partners course. leaving. You yeah. know, we all we all. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there are things that that come up. My my wife has forbidden me from using the word disaster uh, <laughs> around the house uh, because yeah. you, because I you know it's just like a default thing. It's like ah, oh, it's a disaster, you know. But it's yeah. really not, and and no. I don't really see it that way. But it 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 sends the wrong message Correct. around the house, right? You yeah. know, I if will you reflect that out. Bingo. Then you're not going to get good stuff back to you, right? Bingo. If you're, if you're saying yeah, and and yeah. it it. If you start, you got to start small, um, you know, if you can section off these parts of your life that you can't, it's not, you're not denying them, no. but you're just filing it away for when you know you can take action. Okay. 
my this business venture I have is you know going in the toilet. I I know I got to deal with that, but right now I need to go walk around, or I need to go meet with the supplier, or meet with the customer group, or speak at a conference, or whatever it is. Learning how to section off those things and compartmentalize your life will really help you to attract love. Luck, well, maybe love, and, too. and maybe love too. Yeah, no, well, but that, but that, you know, you're totally right. You need to be able to go and be and at least pretend to be your best oh, yeah. self when yeah. opportunity comes and that that's yeah abs- that's absolutely that's yeah. that's and, and it allows you to focus on the now right what's right. happening right now and how can i be you know to your point the, the best person uh and you're ready and you're open to accept what's reflected back to you so compartmentalizing your life attracts luck taking action amplifies that luck oh i like it talking. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I, I have some, I have some ideas about how to, um, how to prepare and it, well, you know, I, I, I said, always be prepared. Right. So we talked about yeah. preparing your mind, right. Allow learning to allow the good stuff in. I want to talk more as you're talking about here, preparing the people around you. Right. Because that uh, yeah. is what attracts luck. The first thing I want to do, though, is talk about our two sponsors. The first one up is Otis, O-T-I-S, at meetotis.com slash SBS, because digital marketing can be a huge challenge, right? It You know, trying to compete with huge marketing teams that have not only lots of people, but lots of, you know, artificial intelligence working on this stuff. It's very time consuming. And if you're not already an expert at it, learning to be one can be a, a real sap on your time. And that's why we've been talking about Otis for the last couple of weeks. Otis is your new digital marketing assistant because Otis is an easy to use mobile app with powerful AI, artificial intelligence technology to help you find new customers who will love your business. The way Otis works, it's cool. You take it slurps in your existing customers, like from your point of sale software, right? Slurps those in, then the AI gets to work and it goes and finds those people and then uses that to figure out other people that match similar interests and then it targets your ads to them. So with Otis, you don't have to learn multiple different complicated ad platforms. You create a campaign inside Otis And it will push your ads to Facebook, Instagram, and Google in minutes. And you pay via Otis, and it balances your budgets to all the different services depending on what it is that you need to do. And it's super affordable. Many Otis clients are seeing results for as little as $10 a day. And we want to get you started with Otis, and they've given us a special offer to give to you. So... When you go to meetotis.com slash SBS, that's M-E-E-T-O-T-I-S dot com slash SBS, you get a 14-day free trial plus a $25 ad credit. So you've got Otis for free for 14 days and money to spend with Otis on ads. What are you waiting for? Meetotis.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Otis for sponsoring this episode. Next up, PDF pen from Smile at smilesoftware.com slash podcast. You know, we use PDFs in business all the time, more so now that everybody's doing things virtually. But, uh, you know, that part, it's certainly of my business, really hasn't changed. It's all PDFs all the time. Like, it couldn't have gotten more because we just use them all the time. But you're going to be searching for a powerful PDF editing tool for your Mac, your iPad, your iPhone. And that's where PDF pen comes in because whether you're on the road or at your desk, you need advanced editing features like being able to sign and fill out forms, correcting typos in your PDF, right? PDF pen allows you to OCR scan documents so that you converting the graphical text into real text. You can, like I said, you can, you can correct typos, which means you can edit a PDF You can redact sensitive info. I needed to send some tax forms in. No problem. I just told PDF pen. I I put in my social. I said, find and redact. 
And it went and redacted all instances of my social all throughout my PDF. I didn't have to, like, it was that fast. What I described to you are the steps that I took. I chose find and redact, and I said go. And it does it. But it also does document compression, annotations. It can password protect your documents. And it can sync with email, Dropbox, and iCloud. Very cool stuff. And, of course, now it even integrates with DocuSign. So go to that URL, smilesoftware.com slash podcast. I know it sounds generic. It is. It's fine. When you go check out, they'll ask you where you heard about PDF Pen. And uh, you can tell them because that's you know what we do here at the Small Business Show. That's what you do. So smilesoftware.com slash podcast. Our thanks to PDF Pen and Smile Software for sponsoring this episode. All right. So good stuff. Yeah, man. In terms of preparing your network, right? It's very likely that that lucky opportunity that shows up on your doorstep one day is going to come from someone you already know. Right. I mean, it might not, but, but chances are that's where it's going to come from, right? A customer, a vendor, even an employee past or present even. That's right. Sure. So I agree. People are going to bring you stuff if they think you will A, be open to it, and B, will have success with it. So the first thing you got to do is be reliable or at least appear like you're reliable. Shannon and I talk about this all the time. I, I want to be seen as someone who's reliable, so I fake it. But in reality, that actually makes me reliable, right? You know, I just, yeah, it doesn't matter that you're pretending to be reliable. It doesn't matter. You really are. Because <laughs> it, it actually... Same, it, it, yeah, it has the same impact. the same impact, right? You, you know, because no one's going to bring an important opportunity to someone that they don't trust will get the job done, right? Yeah, so, yeah, that's so true. So be reliable and just fake it. You know, I'm still faking it. I'll let you know when I've, when I've stopped faking it, but... But, you know, and, and we've talked about ways to do that, you know, with your calendar and making sure that you're always following up with people and all of that stuff. So be reliable, be humble, um, because everyone likes to teach someone else something. It's what we're doing with this show, right? Yeah, be right. humble, be willing to learn from all people at all times. This doesn't mean that you have to pretend like you, you don't know anything, but it does mean be, you know, listen, have e- big ears, let people talk about themselves because it's in those moments where people are talking that they will tell you about opportunities. If they can't get a word in edgewise, they're never going to have an opportunity to spill out that great upper, you know, that, that, that great opportunity for you. But at the same time, you have to be a rock star, right? It, it may seem that this is counter to being humble, but it's not, you know, you and, or your business are good at something And so lean into that, you know, do that well, sing your praises or hire a PR firm to help you sing your praises if you, you know, if that's your thing. But, you know, be, be confident that you can do what it is you do. Because again, think about the type of person that your network is going to bring opportunities to someone that's reliable, someone that's willing to listen, has an open mind, but someone that can get things done. Right. So it's a balancing act. But yeah. if you if you intentionally create that persona or that vibe with people, more of this stuff will come to you, attracting luck. So yeah, yeah, and I think I think that uh, that humble slash rock star dichotomy is being able to ramp your ego up and down. Yes, uh, and you know you you want to be open, you want to feel comfortable saying, "Oh, I don't know." Or I didn't know that, you know, yes. tell me because it's it OK bring, to say that. Yeah. 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 And, it, and it, it can help you a lot. And then at the same time, you want to be able to ramp it up when you need to be the expert or when you're giving a talk or whatever it is, because it doesn't matter if someone else in the room knows more than you. I guarantee there, there probably will be. But your perspective on it is going to be unique. Uh, and uh, so I think that being, you know, being able to ramp it up is, is and, and down is, is yeah. really important. You can't be on all the time or people are like, oh, this guy's a know-it-all and this and the other, but uh, you want to be able to bring it up and down. Yeah. I think it's good. Yeah. Use it as a tool and then you're in good shape. Yeah. 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 And one of the things you said, you know, is kind of preparing your network. And I I think that one of the things that also can attract luck to you is you need to learn to be comfortable with taking risks. And contrary to a lot of times I say, hey, don't talk about stuff until you do it and because it's more powerful. But in this case... I think you do have to talk about it and, sh- and then show by your actions that you're comfortable with taking risks. Because once the word gets out that you're open to risk, you're going to create an environment that attracts luck. Risk takers get more opportunities, more proposals, more offers. 
more chances at being lucky and oftentimes from your network, right? Yeah. Um, if your business, you, you, you know, if your vendors and your suppliers that you're, they know you're open to taking risk by how you talk and the things you do, they're going to come to you with more opportunities. Maybe there's a new product line your supplier has, they want to try out. They're going to find it. They're going to reach out to the person they know is willing to take a chance. So, yeah. you know, risk taking attracts luck and, but then again, action is what amplifies luck. I like it. And, yeah. 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 And, and, you know, there's, there's, I've got some great articles up there uh, that I'll link in the show notes, some from Lifehack, some from Psychology Today about how to get comfortable with risk. Um, it, it's, it's really important. And like, I don't like taking risk. Like I hate going on roller coasters. You know, my mm. kids love it. My son just jumped out of an airplane for some crazy reason, but I, no that's kidding. I always reason. wanted to do that. I, and then oh. I, and then I didn't because we had kids and I thought, well, I'll wait till after, you know, the kids are out of the house. So yeah, he wanted it for his, uh, you know, his graduation present from high school. Smart. And I was like, okay, great. No problem. That's what you want to do. And you know, he, he did it with a buddy of his and I was so impressed. And I, I told him, I said, you know, that I want you to remember what it felt like sitting at the edge of that airplane at 18,000 feet. Cause of course he did the highest wow. jump they offered or whatever. I go, as you sat on the edge of the plane there and get ready to, or stood and get ready to jump out. That's the scariest thing you'll ever face in your life. Yep. So anytime you're worried or you have anxiety, I just want you to go back to that and remember, Oh, I did it. I stepped off that plane and I, yeah. I fell, you know, at 18,000 feet. And I'm hopefully he'll take that because I, w I wish that I, would have done that as a, as a young person, but you know, I, I yeah. really happy taking all kinds of risk other than, go, other than jumping out of a plane or going on a roller coaster. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's a great lesson that you can just, you know, overcome anything, anything. And, no, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. You, th those sort of level setting experiences in life, th th great advice that you gave to your son, because it would be easy to just file that away as like, oh, it was cool. I jumped out of a plane. It's like, yes, that is cool. But yes. there was a moment there. And that yeah. moment is huge. You know, I, I, it, I, it is. I, we were talking because I had this pain that led to me having gallbladder surgery last week. And, you know, my doctor was trying to, you know, get me to explain, you know, how I was experiencing the pain. I said, well, you know, it's interesting. If you had asked me this three years ago, I would have given you a very different answer because I experienced something very, very painful when I, a couple of years ago, I did a weird thing. I bruised my diaphragm, right? But, oh. but after I went through that, especially after I sneezed with a bruised diaphragm, Ooh. yeah, yes. I experienced more pain than I had ever experienced in my life. And I, and I had the, my first thought was if I had ever filled out a form and, you know, put on a scale of one to 10, more than a four, I need the form back because, uh, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, right. It was, it's different, but those kinds of things, if you are intentional about learning from those experiences, they can really help you because you learn, oh, wait, I can tolerate for me, you know, this amount of pain yeah. in your son, like this amount of anxiety, like I got right. through it. Like I can do fear, it. Yeah. yeah this yep. amount of fear. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. 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 Yeah. We talked about, you know, last week we did a show all about failure Yeah. and uh, it's the same thing. Once you have failed and recovered, you, you feel a certain level of confidence that you're like, okay. And it allows you to take more risk because you think, okay, if I, if I mess up here, this is what's, uh, you know, what's going to happen. And, and these are the repercussions. And I mentioned this on the show, you know, years and years ago, uh, my attorney said, Hey, I've never met anybody that's really created a significant wealth without really screwing up badly. Right? <laughs> and, and and I was young and in my twenties and I was like, Oh, well, that's not going to happen to me, man. I'm we're on fire. And we were on a rocket ship. My, you know, it was my first large business that we built and yep. it was just growing so fast and everything else. But sure enough, you know, now when I go have lunch with the guy, I'm just like, gosh, you know, you were right. You better, how'd you know? you know? Yeah. How'd you know? And he's like, Oh, I had more gray hair than you, than you did at that time. <laughs> It's so true. Yeah. Yeah. You, true. you have yeah. to have, I mean, I guess you don't have to have some level of failure, but it is, it is, yeah. you know, it, 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 it tends to go with the territory. So. I would rather have made that if I had never failed like that. And then I was in, you know, now in my fifties, which yeah. I am, I, I certainly don't want to have that. I, I cannot have that kind of failure now. Right. right. So if I had never you had could, that, though. you could, you could, you could survive well, it. 
Yeah, I, I know I could, but I don't want to. Right. Uh, it's it's you know, I don't want to work for another. You know, it took me 10 years to recover from that wipeout failure mm-hmm. that I had. Um, and it was fine. I lived fine during that 10 years, but it was sure. a 10 year battle mentally, financially, everything else. Uh, I don't want to go through that in my 50s. Going through that in your you know mid 20s uh, is a different story. No right? big deal. Yeah. Or less of a big deal. That's right. Less of a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked about preparing your mind, preparing your network. I want to talk about preparing your business because you need to, your business needs to be prepared for when luck shows up. Right. And so the first thing that I can think of when I start kind of going through this is have enough cash reserves to take on uh, a new risk, right? Because an opportunity is a risk. It's going to take some money potentially, but it's going to take your time, right? And so having some cash around can help you buy your own time to focus on whatever this new thing is. So that's number one. Number two is have systems in place in your business, right? We talk about business systems all the time here to ensure that your current business runs fine while you explore and expand this new lucky opportunity. And those systems can include you know, automated like engines that you've built. It can include other employees that are doing things or contractors who are doing things for you. Just finding a way to be able to offload like, okay, I need to, you know, carve out 50% of my time to think about this new thing or to focus on this new thing. So here's what's going to happen so that my existing business still can be the cash cow that it is. Right. And that's, that's great. And, and then, you know, at the very least, have a system of reminders in place. If you're, if it's, if it's just you and it might just be you, uh, or if, even if you have some other people working for you, if you can't offload those things, maybe you don't have the cash, create a system of reminders. You know, I talked about being a slave to your calendar that you put in place to remind you to do your existing job because you're going to be thinking about the new one, right? And the new exciting thing. Well, the things that you had to do still have to get done, And so just build yourself a series of like recurring to do's or calendar entries, whatever works for you. Keep it simple, but keep it thorough so that you get to your desk and you're like, all right, let me knock out the, you know, the five things that are on my calendar that I have to do. And then, you know, if I can get those done before, say, 11 a.m., now I've got the rest of the day to focus on the new thing that I want to focus on. Right. It's balancing the needs versus the wants. So that system of reminders can be the thing. I, I truly believe that's the difference between me being, you know, successful in business and a fa- and you know, just I mean, like failure in terms of just systematic failure. Yeah, there are we things that can somebody else, right? There, right? there are there are disasters that can happen that cause your business to fail through no fault of your own. But you know, you can let your business run into the ground if you're not doing the yeah. things that need to be done. That system of reminders for me, man, like it's the thing. Cause I want, I don't want to do all the grunt work, but I want to have my to-do list checked off. So yeah, it's, that's yeah. such great advice. Yeah. And I tell you the way the, the reminders that I do every day, the first thing I do, we've talked about this before. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I look at my bank accounts yeah. and I look at all the different accounts, my home accounts, business accounts, everything, whether it's pit, sitting in PayPal at the bank, uh, somewhere else uh, at a marketplace that's holding, I, I go through yeah. and I look at all the cash and always, always. Cause I, I want to find out if there's any problem areas. And then at the end of the day, it, this is a really simple thing that I've embraced the last uh, five years of my life that I've changed after selling my last, uh, uh, you know, somewhat larger business with a bunch of employees. But I look at the end of the day and see how much revenue I generated that day. Oh, wow. how much cash, yeah. how much cash did I, did I make? And I don't know if it's the healthiest thing. I've been thinking more about this because as I migrate to different part of my, you know, different yeah. uh, stage of my life, I'm not sure. But right now it does grind me or does ground me. So I go, okay, even if I didn't get that cash in the door, how much revenue did I generate today via how many book sales did I make today with my uh, Poshmark Unlocked book or yeah. the Mistakes Guide? How many of those books, how many small business show guides uh, sold? Um, you know, what happened on eBay? What happened on Poshmark? What other revenue? You know, I look at my revenue stack and I see, okay, what did I do today? And if it's not that great, then I think, well, tomorrow, maybe I need to focus more on those cash uh, opportunities versus 
things that are a little bit more esoteric, maybe a little more down the road kind of stuff. So that's my my uh, way I balance things. Um, it works. It works pretty good for me right now. Huh. So, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, it, and even if the, so the numbers can be, you know, they, they don't have to be really large, right? Like I, I told you, like right now, that Poshmark, I'll share here, that Poshmark Unlocked book, it generates about a thousand bucks a month on my revenue stack, which is okay. not that much. But it, you know, it, it but it's a thousand bucks. Stuff. Yeah, of course, it's a thousand bucks. I don't do anything. I publish that book, and I I don't do any marketing on it. I mean, I have a Facebook group and followers, that kind of stuff, but I sure. don't really put any what I would consider hard effort into it. So I look at that, and then I look at these other things and all that kind of stuff, and it it helps me, uh, you know, enjoy my evening more, and it helps me motivate me for the next day if I didn't generate that much cash you, you know, know that's interesting i don't i don't do i do the bank account thing because you told me to years and years ago and, and I, so i do that because it's great advice uh um, somebody else told me to do that too wasn't yeah I, uh, no it doesn't matter whose idea it was it's a great idea so thank you uh yeah. but i i've never well i'm not currently doing the how much cash did i generate today but i used to do that when i was in the consulting business yeah. i would very i was very much aware of okay i'm getting home I just finished doing all the things I did for the day. How, what's my, how much cash did I generate? You know, and I would do it that every yeah. day and it really did become a motivating thing. It's like, okay, it does. yep. Now I can, like you said, I can enjoy my evening, but I can also be eager to go out and do it again tomorrow because I look at the cash I generated today. Like, right. That's, and yeah. and it, like I said, it, sometimes it's lower. Sometimes it's Oh, awesome, man. We had a bang up day. Yeah. But it, it's it's just a grind a grounding thing that this is what I'm doing right now. Yeah. All the things that I'm involved in with my business need to be generating revenue at some point. Yes. Is the way I look at it. Yes. Uh, yes, I'm trying to build my brand. Yes, I'm you know, I love doing the podcast and it generates money as well. And and so you stack all that stuff up and look at it. Uh and it and it is one of the it's more the short term yeah. that helps keep me grounded, so I don't get too far out there thinking of uh, yeah the you know, big picture, yeah big picture stuff. Yeah, yeah. So just just a little hack that that I do. Oh, I like that. Um, That's good. Yeah. So I have, okay. So I have one more uh, aspect of attracting luck that I want to talk about, and I'm going to use the baseball analogy that I talked about last week, uh, and and that is. I think you have to take all the swings, right? You have to keep trying to, to hit the ball. Uh, if you keep searching for that one great idea, that one great deal, you're not attracting luck. The odds are against you if you're thinking like that. Make yourself stand out by trying harder than others. The mm. more you try, Ooh. the more you, you'll find the luck is going to come find you, right? Because people just look at, like, dude, this guy's just hustling. You know, if there's someone I could, you know, do something for, this person is just doing this. Whether it's, you you name it. I mean, I know people on, uh, people we've had on the show here that are on LinkedIn and are just, they own it, man. This guy's got like 5,000 followers, you know, uh, and it was Brian from uh, SellYourMac.com. Oh, yeah. And, and, and oh, he's, dude, he's, he's trying harder than everybody else. It's so true. Yes, he is. He's you, trying you know, he, harder. I posted something about how I had that surgery last week and he yeah. sent, he posted a comment. It was, it was obviously a yeah. very thoughtful thing, but he also posted a picture of himself, you know, like giving me the thumbs <laughs> yeah. up. And Dude. it was a picture he took of himself in that moment. Like it didn't feel staged or anything, yeah, but yeah. everything in that guy's life is staged because that's how it is. He's always wearing the blue suit. That's the yep. sell your Mac that blue. Bright blue suit all the way down to the blue shoes. Yep. And I really respect that. You know, and it was like, look at that guy. He's just branding yeah. without even like, I don't just think he was around. Yeah. Just, he's just walking around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it was a very yeah. thoughtful moment. It did not feel manipulative, but it, no, as I no, noticed, that's it, I'm him. Like, that yeah. dude. Yeah. It's authentic. And yeah. so people who can bring you luck, they'll see your efforts, right? Your network automatically expands. It's it's automatic. It's automatically expands to include people who think more like you and can offer you help and can bring you luck, right? Yeah. So you increase your odds of finding luck by taking more swings of the bat, right? So, you know, more trying attracts luck, but action amplifies luck. I keep coming back Ooh. to that. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, it's always that way. You know, the luck is out there looking for you. If you're listening to this show, if you're learning more, if you're connecting with more people, you are more likely to find luck. Then you can take action that is required to amplify the luck. And so 
go back and listen to episode 290, where we really honed in and talk about action and why we think small business should be a verb, because action is just the critical part of being successful. And you can take all this luck that we're helping you attract to today and take that action. We'll put a, a link in the show notes. And, you know, I know you're, if you're listening to these words and you're making that effort, the luck is out there looking for you. And someday someone is going to look from the outside and go, God, that guy or that, that lady is so lucky. How did they get all that, that opportunity? And the, the truth of the matter is you just created it yourself. Yeah. There's no yeah, doubt. It's not magic. It. No, 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 it, it's not. You just do the work. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So, so this is great. I love talking about this because, you know, I always say I learn the most. Well, I just had a half an hour of convincing my brain about how this process works and coming up to it. Right. Yeah. And, and that, that is a huge thing. You know, we, there, there's a whole affirmation to do affirmations work. We talked about that a few episodes back yep. um, with the therapist we had on and this is like the affirmation because then, because you know, I'm way up there on the, the level of being jacked up about luck right now. Oh, same. I just talked about it. Yeah. Right. And so I would encourage you to do this. You listen to this, talk to people around you, share this podcast, you know, share your stories with us. Feedback at businessshow.co. We want to hear from you. Go up and leave us a review, businessshow.co slash reviews. You know, reward us back. Help us, uh, help by sending us some luck by leaving your review in the podcast directory of your choice. Yeah, but, uh, please do. We love talking about it, and we're going to do it here each week. Each Thank week, you so much. That's it. That's what we got. Thanks to all of you for listening. As Shannon said, feedback at businessshow.co. We definitely want to hear from you. Check out our sponsors: meetotis.com slash sbs and smilesoftware.com slash podcast. And, uh, you know, keep living that charmed life. It's a mentality. It is, it, you know, it is something you have control over. We all do. And bring us your opportunities, too. 